because I'm I'm personally very interested in hearing this and 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 really more under uh, more deeply understanding the topic for tonight. I've been on such a journey of learning, especially over the last year. I myself had a chronic illness for many many years, and Western medicine had nothing to do to help me, as many of us have noticed <laughs> about Western medicine in chronic illness. And um, so I studied many alternatives, and I found my way, and I found an answer, and I was able to heal myself, or help my body heal me. <laughs> yes. Uh, help my body heal itself. <laughs> anyway, um, and so anyway, I've learned a lot about it, but I, in the last year, because of the interesting goings-on in the world, <laughs> and all the people who have responded to the interesting goings-on, uh, I've learned even more. And it's so fascinating, and I'm so grateful. And it's starting to all come together in a much more clear and c comprehensive way. And John Nagel, our guest speaker tonight, is part of that in, in helping me understand how it all fits together in a beautiful way. Uh, and it's very empowering. I, I really feel more empowered uh, about maintaining my health and improving it now that I have this information. So uh, that's why I'm so thrilled to share it with others. I'm so grateful that you came. And I'm so grateful that you might uh, let other people know about what you've learned and share the video when it comes out. <laughs> so we have Rainbow to thank for recording. And... Um, there's a handout by the uh, Buddha statue. Oh, and there's handouts by the Buddha statue over here. Which I'm going to follow along. That. So you could take little notes or follow along and have Would more. you mind just bringing all of those over and passing out? Or just pick one and pass it around? Um, to help you uh, have a more coherent understanding of what's being presented tonight. So, are we live? I've been since you started talking. Oh, how wonderful. Hello, guests at home. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our circle. <laughs> um, we're so glad you joined us, uh, guests at home and in the future recording. Um, so happy to share this with you. And um, also want to invite you to future events in person, if you can make it. Thank you. <laughs> because it really is truly, uh, I always feel so filled and nourished to be around all these beautiful people and feel the energy radiating from the hearts of all these people. It just feels so good and it really is a blessing for our home to have you all gathered here. And so thank you for that blessing that you're giving me and, and, and all of us who live in this home. Most of our housemates are actually not here tonight. They, some are on the Big Island, some are um, vacationing, camping. And <laughs> Um, so, but they will get the blessing of the energy that's radiating here tonight. <laughs> so I'm so grateful. And um, so, um, our special guest tonight is John Nagel, and he has. Um, I've heard wonderful stories about his experience of being an energy healer, being a healer unexpectedly and kind of unintentionally almost <laughs> but it came came to him to be this and um, it's very fascinating and wonderful and as I say it integrates with my understanding about our health and healing in many ways and I'm just so grateful and um, I also love him because he's very tall and he gives really good hugs <laughs> and I really love tall hugs <laughs> but also um, <laughs> Because he comes to our sound healing journeys every Saturday night. <laughs> He's been very, uh, very a wonderful um, supporter of that. And we love sharing our gongs and our bowls. And we do that every Saturday night. So you're also welcome to join us for that. that the journey starts at 8. So, did I miss anything, Rainbow? I don't think so. I think you're back now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well... Um, I do want to give the floor to John. Oh, and he will be open for questions later. Uh, so you can jot down your questions <laughs> and so you don't forget them or put them on your phone. <laughs> Speaking of phones, you might want to turn this, them to be silent, however. And um, <laughs> yes. 
and so that we can really hear and, and take in this wonderful information that he's going to share tonight. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so before I begin to talk, uh, I'm going to do a tapping session so everybody can experience the energy. And, you know, you've all felt energy. And so you can play with it if you want. So if you have a craving or an addiction or you have a deep-seated issue, you know, with your awareness, go into the energy of it. And while I'm tapping, and I'll be tapping like this on the dial, so you'll hear this rat-tat-tat. And I'll be tapping different spots. So, and I'll be, when you don't hear the tapping, I'll be moving my hand up and down like this. So you don't have to start peeking, because I'd rather have you go into yourself and feel the energy and get connected to the energy as much as, as, much as possible, okay? So when everybody's settled, I'll, I'll start to do this. Here, you sit right there. You can sit right there. All right, so if you would, just close your eyes, start to take some deep breaths. And if you do have a craving or an addiction or a deep blockage, just go into it with your awareness. And if you have like a smoking addiction, just pretend you have a cigarette in your hand and you're just taking deep inhalation breaths. And then follow to wherever it goes in your body. If you have a craving for chocolate or something else, just make believe like you're chewing the chocolate and follow to where that goes into your body. And if you have a deep-seated issue and a blockage, just go into the energy. And you want to be present with the energy as much as possible. And the people at home who are listening in, you can feel this too. Because the majority of the work I do is remote healing. So when you're ready, you can open up your eyes. So hopefully you all felt that. Now, my approach is um, I have a couple different health pages that have a combined membership of about 1,800 people. And it's mostly people with debilitating diseases. And it's to help them understand how electron flow is essential to their health. Because in this method, you know, everybody knows about mind-body medicine. And there's many general approaches. This is a very specific approach. It's specific to specific diseases, and it's specific to the blockages, where they are in the body, and how they result in a specific disease. So in this approach, there's two different types of disconnects. One is a disconnect with your electron flow being interrupted, and the other is a disconnect with your emotions. Virtually everybody I deal with who has a debilitating disease, they're not connected emotionally to themselves. They do their emotions in their, in their mind, but they're not doing their emotions in their body. 
So I, you know, generally this is a very common dynamic I find, but the child within is always trying to get love from the emotionally remote parent, whether they're alive or whether they've passed on. And I find that in virtually every case. So, and an example of that is, I had somebody with Alzheimer's and he couldn't even put his hands together. And <clears throat> when I helped him identify the dynamic that the Alzheimer's would put him in a wheelchair, just like his father had been later in life after he suffered a stroke, he re that blockage released and 60 days later, he was refereeing middle school basketball games. So when you, you know, my method is for the body to heal itself. What, you know, the, the goal is to give the body what it needs to heal itself. And so that's, that's my focus. And, you know, I've been in this healing work for since the mid 1980s. And I'm a problem solver by nature. And I'm also a resultant. I don't care about the science. I don't care about if something gets results, that's what I care about. Doesn't matter how they get them. If it gets consistent, sustainable, repeatable results, that's what matters to me. Because if you're getting those types of results, then whatever you're doing is basically going to be aligned with natural laws. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to repeat them over and over and over again. So, and I've been exposed to many types of modalities of energy healing. The one I like the best is Tong Ren, because Tong Ren for 30 years has helped thousands of people restore normal cell behavior from all types of debilitating diseases. So, and, you know, those are the things. I like a guy named the medical medium who channels information, but his information gets results. So that's why I like him. Anybody who gets results, I'm attracted to. You know, another person I like is Eileen McCusick. She wrote a book called Electric Body, Electric Health. If you want to learn anything about electric health, this is a great book. So she just, this was just released this year. So, and on my Facebook page, which is called The Story of Your Health, there's all these, all these resources that are there for you to help yourself understand how to heal your body. I don't fix people per se. I help them fix themselves. That's, that's my focus. So when it comes to electron flow, it's a signal from the brain. You know, your brain's the most electrical thing in creation. It's got billions of neurons firing multiple times a second. In Western medicine, they don't equate it to health, but I do. So it's that signal that goes to your cells and back to your brain that is the determining factor of your health. There's a lot of contributing factors. You know, nutrition, diet, exercise, meditation, you know, positive thinking, positive programs. But at the end of the day, why healthy people get sick is because of the blockage of that signal. You know, you could be doing the best diet, the best meditations, the best of everything. But if that signal's blocked, you're going to have a problem. So, you know, that's, that's one level of healing is I'm blocking this electron flow. Now, the two things that impede that the most... By far, the major one, subconscious beliefs. Number two, toxicity. 
So whether it's, you know, with to me personally with COVID, it's electrical that toxicity that's a big driver of that whole dynamic. Because with 5G, the pulsating waves of 5G mimic the pulsating waves in which cells communicate with themselves. So the 5G just is too strong. You know, think about a TV or a radio. It doesn't take much to get static, being slightly off signal. Well, it's the same thing with your body. You know, you have all this electrical activity going, going on. And if it gets interfered with, you know, you're going to have a problem. So, but in terms of subconscious beliefs, um, another person I like is Louise Hay. She's been around, you know, her book has sold 50 million copies in 33 different languages to people all around the world. So, when I start to get symptoms personally, I equate symptoms with text messages. That's how I look at it, you know? So when something starts to happen in my body, okay, these are my go-to books. Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, because I want to know what beliefs are associated with the affliction. And then this is a Tong Ren book. It's called A Lazy Bum's Guide to Healing. <laughs> now, Tom Tam, is, he's a funny guy, so he, he likes to crack little jokes. You know, it's not uncommon when he has a tapping session for cancer people or people with uh, neurological degenerative diseases that there's always some people laughing in the room, you know. <laughs> now, this book is like an electrician's guide to the body. For every affliction, it tells you the blockage points. So I met Tom Tam in the mid 80s when a real estate broker I was dealing with said to me, oh, you got a bad back? You got to go see the back guy. I said, who's the back guy? He said, oh, it's Tom Tam. So off I went to see Tom Tam. So I'm waiting there for him to do some acupuncture on my back. And I opened this book and I'm looking through it. And I'm thinking to myself, does this make sense or what? <laughs> At the same time, my father, who has Parkinson's, has taken a dozen prescription medications. And I'm thinking to myself, his immune system doesn't know whether it's going or coming. Yep. It has no idea what's going on. This tells me where the problems are in terms of the electrical blockages. Can you, can you tell me again the name of that book? Yeah. A Lazy Bum's Healing. And if you order, there's a pocket guide too. So between the, the doll, the hammer, and these two books, he calls it the essentials kit. But I, I, I think it's like a hundred bucks on his website. Okay. And what's his website? His website is Tong Ren. T O N G R E N station dot com. One more time. T O M T O N as in Nancy G N R E N station. So the next level of healing that I focus on is what I call working through layers of false beliefs. So whether you're angry or resentful or you know, you're carrying a lot of grief, a lot of bitterness, when I look through all that stuff, the foundation level issue is self-trust. Self-trust and unworthiness is basically the foundation level of what I find personally. So, you know, it may come through that whole spectrum of emotions, but at the end of the day, 
at some deep level, do you trust yourself? And so in my approach, I have three main characters. I have the daily egoic self. I have the eternal authentic self. And then I have the child within. Now the child within, when your life comes to a standstill, the child within, the emotional child within, brings it to a standstill. Doesn't matter what the affliction is. The, the child within says, enough. I want some attention. And it slams the brakes on in your life. And until it gets enough attention, you're going to be struggling. So what I tell people is, you have to realize you're the one true parent to the child within. Not your parents. You can blame your parents all you want, but that's wattless energy, okay? The true parent to the child within is you. And like I told my daughter, who's a young mother, I said, look, this is the perfect opportunity for you to parent up the child within. Just treat it like another child. Do everything together. And that's what I tell people. Write out a contract, commit to do everything together for 90 days, sign it, and then the child within will sign it with your non-dominant hand. And keep reminding yourself, whatever you need to do, if you need to tie a ribbon or something or put it on your arm or whatever, whatever reminder, daily reminder you need, do it. Now, here's another thing to understand in healing, okay? There's a big difference between the brain and the mind, okay? Your brain is your best friend in healing and restoring normal cell behavior. Your mind, on the other hand, wants to maintain control of your life and of your health. And your mind has no problem sacrificing your body to maintain control. So your mind will fight you in terms of giving up control. It'll make you tired. It'll make you confused. When it, you know, when it doesn't want to hear what it doesn't want to hear, it'll shut you down. So it takes people, you have to be committed. You know, in terms of my approach is you, I don't work with people unless they're fully committed to wanting to get better. And, you know, I'm talking about in 60 or 90 days. I'm not talking about two years from now. You know, so people who want to, who are committed and willing to do the emotional work, this isn't a popular method because most people don't want to touch their emotions. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's much easier to take a pill. You know, whether it's a supplement or a pharmaceutical, it doesn't matter. And everybody always wants somebody else to fix them. So, so that's why this approach isn't particular. You know, people come and see me as a last resort. They don't come and see me as a first choice. They see me because they've run out of options. You know, so... So a guy who's very good at defining the tricks of the mind is Eckhart Tolle, who wrote The Power of Now. He's written a few books, but he's got a lot of YouTube videos. So you can listen to his videos or, you know, he's easy to find. And so, but he's, to me, he does the best job of detailing all the tricks the mind plays. Because the mind is very devious. You know, mind's good for scheduling, but it wants to run your life too, so. <laughs> Let's see. All 
Okay, so this is a, this is a simple formula I've come up with that really is, helps people understand. But it goes like this. Unimpeded electron flow equals normal cell be communication equals normal cell behavior equals health. Now the guy who turned me on to cell communication was Dr. Zach Bush. And once I got that piece, then I came up with this formula. Because as you know, when you're trying to explain energy healing to people, there's all types of different language for it. But you know, it's tough to explain. But once I came up with this, it was much easier. And that's when my health pages took off, is when that formula, when I came up with that formula. So obviously, when you have impeded electron flow, you have cell miscommunication, you have cell malfunction, you have disease. Okay. So the process is the same for virtually every disease. I mean, it's not so much a cure. What you know, the end game is restoring normal cell behavior. You want the body to restore normal cell behavior. That's the goal. You're just helping it achieve that goal. Okay. So. And when you combine emotional releasing with releasing blockages, that's when you can have accelerated healing. And we're gonna show a little video in about five minutes that kind of demonstrates this. Now, you know, for me, what do I do, what do, I do on a daily basis for, so, you know, I'll tap with a doll and a hammer if I want to open up certain spots, okay? This is a thing called a tuning fork. And it's, so this, you hit this fork and I'll just work points. I know the meridian points in my head. You know, I'm, I just turned 71. So if you're vain, one of the benefits of this is it helps you age gracefully. But, you know, I use it for this. I use it for my vision. I use it for my hearing. I use it for, you know, points that have to do with memory. So I just work a lot of points. And whether, what's that? You got me. I, 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 I knew it before, but I forgot. But this is from the biofield tuning site. And this is called a circuit boot. So the fork itself is called a sonic slider. So if you go on there, it's the sonic slider with a circuit boot, and it's about 130 bucks. But, you know, I use this a lot. I use this virtually every day. And you can use it on different parts of your body. So, now here's some other things I do. Let's say I get up and I'm gonna go exercise and my knee feels funny. So what do I do? I just stretch out my knee and I start pressing down on all the meridian points and I start feeling where the stuck ones are. And then I just work those meridian points. So, you know, that's how I just, on a daily basis, some of the things I do you know, like the other, last week, it was like I had something going on in my Achilles heel. So I just took off my shoe and started working the meridian points around here, loosened them up, you know. Then I went to the book and found out what's the subconscious belief with Achilles heel, you know. I did a little session internally and so, oh yeah, here's another thing too that I like to do. When I, when I do internal work, okay, the key is to get to the energy. 
and stay in the energy. Because when you're present in the energy, then it starts to release. So the story is secondary. The story gets you into the energy. It's, that's what you want. You want anything that takes you into the energy. You know, I use songs. I use movies. I use anything that takes me into a space. I use, you know, whatever takes me there. It was this, I was watching a Ken Burns country music special on PBS, and there was this song, Hard Times. And for some reason, that song just hit me, boom. I ended up listening to that song 50 times to get into, keep on taking me back into that energy until I finally released it. So, and sometimes, so, you know, I'm not about reliving the story. All I'm about is getting into the energy deep enough so I can release more of the energy. So whatever takes me there. And sometimes it just, you know, when I'm sitting at a red light for an extended period of time, if something comes up, I'll just, while I'm sitting there, I'll just work on it. By, with my breath and with my awareness and whatever vision or sound or whatever takes me into that sp space. And so, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons I avoid a lot of afflictions. You know, a lot of my contemporaries have new knees and new hips and new this and new that and blue, blah, 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 blah. You know, and heart procedures left and right. And I don't come from the greatest gene pool. <laughs> my father died of Parkinson's. My mother died of cancer. I have a younger brother who died of Crohn's and colitis. I have a baby brother who's got a heart condition. You know, I mean, my sister's a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor. There's, you know, I've got all these people around me that are not in the greatest health. So... You know, as Bruce Lipton likes to say, he's another guy I like. You know, there's like 80,000 expressions of, of gene expression, okay? So don't think you're locked into your genes, you know? And if you saw a picture of my family, you would realize that's the case. Because <laughs> we, we look entirely different, so, you know. Um, can we run that video? So this, let me give you a little backstory to this. Okay, so this, we're going to see a, a fella, Dave, in this video. Dave had leukemia three years to me prior to meeting him. Then he had stem cell replacement. Then he had a cytokine storm from graft and host disease. Then he had numerous afflictions. So his best buddy called me up and said, will you work with my friend, my best friend from college? I said, why don't you have him read my, web, my page? If, he's, if it resonates with him, I'll work with him. But I said, I don't want to waste his time or my time. So to me, prior to working with him, 12 months before he developed a mystery neurological condition. He had been to five neurologists, been through all types of tests and scans and whatever. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. So, and when I work with people, they have to be able to muscle test because what I want them to do is tap into the wisdom of their body. I want them to get beyond their mind because your mind is not your friend initially in healing, okay? So you want to get beyond the mind. I want their body's wisdom to tell them the answer. I don't want their mind. So I want quick answers, one word, two word answers, boom, 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 boom. So I said to him, look, you got to practice this. You got to be able to just instantly know one way or another, affirmative, non-affirmative, what the answer is. And then we can work together. So the first session with him, we got into it. And 
What I do is when they're in deep enough emotionally into that situation, uh, usually there's some type of emotional reaction. And, you know, in his case, he started crying a lot. And I just said, you know, don't worry about it. And he starts apologizing. And he said, no, this is exactly where you want to be. You want to be in that space. So just stay there. And so then I just hang up the phone and tell them to stay there as long as they can. So the next session with him, which was about a week later, he says, oh, my God, oh, my God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I said, for what? He says, oh, you don't understand. He said, I couldn't use utensils before our last session. I couldn't go up and down stairs by myself. I couldn't get myself up from a seated position by myself. He said, the best I could do was walk around the living room with a, a walker for 25 steps. It's the best I could do. After his third session, he was walking three miles without a cane or a walker. So you can, you can play that now. If you want. Oh, so this is a Tang Ren testimonial. He had COVID and he was on oxygen. And I said, Tom's got a new machine that supposedly helps people with oxygen levels. So why don't you go to this, go see him. That's how he ended up there. And that's how this testimonial came about. Can they hear? Right. So what is it about the vibrations that is helping the electron flow? Well, by working, it harmonizes the cell behavior. So that's what helps the flow. In other words, anything that stimulates a meridian point, you know, this is another thing I use. I mean, I just run this up and down my neck, my back, because everybody who has a major disease has blockages on the side of the neck right here where the phrenic and the vagus nerve are, and the top four thoracics, one through four. So virtually everybody who's got a major disease will have blockages there. And then here's another thing I use, is a, is a cupping machine. That's going to be louder. That's a cupping machine? 
So I just stick that, you know, in these major areas. Because think of it this way. This area in your body, these are the major circuit breakers for disease. You keep those open, you can avoid a lot of diseases. You know, the phrenic, the vagus nerve is the biggest nerve in your body. It controls your whole lower, all these people who have all types of afflictions in terms of digestion and everything else, you know, vagus nerve. So, you know, so any, and then the other nerve is the phrenic nerve. The, that's the nerve with the biosignal. So you want to keep those two nerves open, you know? So, you know, everybody has cancer, has a blockage at, the, at these spots right here. So, and if the blockage is in there, you know, because a normal cell can become cancerous in 48 hours if it's deprived 35% of its oxygen level. So... Yep. So this is Dave here. So Dave, can you tell us a little bit about um, your condition before coming here? And this is your first time here, I would say, to the audience. Yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. what my condition was, was that I have low blood oxygen. And so I wanted to come here to check out Sean Pam's new machine, Diuret Health Guy. So I need to be on an oxygen machine all the time. I have been for the last two months. So today, Sean put his new machine in front of me. I sat down for the hour-long meeting. I didn't realize I put my tube under the chair and it squeezed the tube. So I wasn't breathing any oxygen from my machine for over an hour. When I measured on my oximeter, it was 99 at the end. I couldn't believe it. So experiment, I walked around the room a number of times because that would normally drive it down. I sat down, I measured it, I was at 95. That's with no oxygen. What about before coming? I still have no oxygen. <laughs> yeah, the oxygen here, but it's on giving your forehead oxygen right now. So what about before coming? Just doing the online sessions. Oh, these two of this year, I couldn't walk or stand up without someone helping me. Someone had to help me upstairs to go to the bathroom. Someone had to help me sit on the toilet and get up off the toilet. I couldn't do anything. I started doing Congren online sessions every single day. Also working with a practitioner from Hawaii. So he was remote as well. And in about three weeks, I was up and walking, and I was walking about three miles a day yeah. with no walker, no cane, no assistance. Mm. So I would, I would just uh, call it a small miracle. It's a huge miracle. A big miracle. <laughs> you know? So thank you, Tom Sam. Yeah, thank you. And just doing the online, the remote healing sessions on congrenstation.com for three weeks, and now you're up and about walking two and a half miles, yep. and before assistance everywhere. Correct. New this life is, now. This is a new thing since then. So. Yeah, so you have a new life now too. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Sure. Thank you. That's it. So. So every once in a while, you know, a situation like that happens where somebody's, you know, their life has come to a standstill and they do the work, they re the blockage releases, and boom. You know, in his case, because he was in Boston and I was here, I could just feel, I would feel where the blockage was. And like when I first started out with him, I said, okay, I want you to go into your awareness and feel where the major blockage is. He said, I don't have blockages. I said, well, to rotate your head around. Oh, yeah, he says, I feel something. <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, and where is this blockage? Oh, he says, it's on the right side. And I said, the front or the back? 
He's in the back. I said, you're right. It's exactly where it is. <laughs> so that's, what he, that's the blockage he went into. So, and, you know, basically we, so here's how I work, okay? I'll give you an example with him. So this is why you need to muscle test, be able to muscle test. I said to him, okay, is this associated with your mother's ancestral river or your father's ancestral river? Because these beliefs come intergenerational, okay? He said, my father, okay? I said, did, this, did your arrestment occur in utero or after birth? After birth. I said, one through five or five through 10? One through five. I said, so was it year one, two, three, four, or five? He says, year four. I said, was it spring, summer, fall, or winter? He said, fall. I said, September, October, November. He said, September. So then I said, first week, second week, third week, fourth week. Now, some people, you get to the year and they know exactly, exactly what it was. And then they basically break out in tears and, you know, and have an emotional response. Now, I've taken some people to the exact you know, because I go, I continue. I go the day, then I go, so, you know, I go the week, the day, and then I go morning, noon, or night. So I took somebody to that exact moment, and they said, I can't, I, I can't remember anything. I said, that's okay. You don't have to. The story's not important. I said, it's the energy that's important. Can you feel the energy? Yeah. So I said, you just go into the energy. Okay? And I said, and if, what kind of reaction are you getting from it? Are you getting a picture or a sound? What do you get? You know, so with that person, it kind of went several steps. And then finally, the memory came back to her. And then she broke out, you know. And so, but once you hit that point, see, the important thing to realize is the energy doesn't care. The energy is neutral. Your mind has you scared of the blockage, of the energy. But the energy has no agenda. The energy is just neutral. It's the mind's memory, the mind's story, the mind's interpretation of what happened. That is the scary part. So what I tell people is you know, realize what the mind's agenda is to keep you from releasing the energy. Because as long as you're stuck in fear, the mind is running your life. Guaranteed. It's running your health and it's running your life. When you can get beyond the mind and get into the energy, and release it, then you are start, starting to take control of your health. And realize this. I tell people, look, the child within isn't going to trust the egoic self because the egoic self has never done a thing for the child within to begin with. So the child within, you've got to take the child within with the authentic self. The eternal self. And they become the team. And eventually, when the child within matriculates up, when you parent the child within up enough, then it integrates with your eternal self. So this is, you know, so, you know, as I said, this works not for everybody. But when it works, it produces big results for people, you know? And, you know, life is a mystery. So for some people, it doesn't work. And, you know, what I tell people is, look, 
because you get to a point, I've had people where, you know, um, they don't want to do the work, you know. So I say to them, okay, you may not want to do the work, but don't, um, you know, be kind to yourself. Don't, don't do the chemo and the radiation and the, just repeating the same pattern. Why torture yourself? You know, if you know you don't want to do the work, just get a painkiller until you pass on, you know. Don't, don't keep torturing yourself to the last minute, you know, which is kind of the standard procedure. I mean, you know, they sign up for these experimental, you know, chemotherapies, and they don't understand the economics of that in terms of recruiting them to get into these studies, you know, so... I just tell them, don't torture yourself. You know, if you care about yourself, just get some painkillers and, you know, because not everybody, you know, if they haven't had a good life, you know, people are in their 60s, 70s. If, if they've had a tough life, they're ready to, a lot of them are ready to go. You know? So... You know, and I don't judge anything in terms of what's what's being presented. To me, life lives itself. So whatever is being presented is I just accept. Because think about it. You know, true healing is when the opposites come together in the zero point of neutrality. And we all have these internal opposites. Even the child within, you've got the survival child and you've got the emotional child. The emotional child is the one that's been neglected for all these years and brought your life to a standstill. The survival child always thinks, oh, I can solve this problem. I'll take care of it. I don't have time for you, emotional child. We don't want to deal with your stuff. You know, I'll just solve. Because we all survive mentally in our mind, right? I mean, that's kind of the standard deal for most people is they survive mentally. Their mental body dominates their existence, you know. Especially today, I mean, in, to me in this, all these things that are happening in terms of our external environment are kind of male-dominated mental body dynamics, you know. So... So even so, when you can, like, think about this, okay? So you have a belief, and you're afraid to let go of it, okay? And you get this conflict, this inner conflict between the survival child and the emotional child. They're basically at war with each other over this belief, right? One's saying, let's let go, and the other one's saying, no way, because cause why? Because the survival child thinks if it lets go, it dies, that's why change is so hard is because these survival beliefs that came early in your life or whether they came in utero or after you were born, they're the ones that if, believe that if it lets go, it's going to die. And you got the emotional one who's more, I don't think we're going to die, but... So once you let them know they're fighting to over holding on to this belief, it kind of makes it easier to let go. You kind of say, why are we fighting with ourselves about this? Because nobody else is holding on to this belief, it's just us. We're the only ones wrestling with each other about this. Because your eternal self is totally indifferent to the story. The energy of the blockage is indifferent to the story. So, so when you can get to the point of that realization, that's helpful. So, any questions? What's your formula for um, 
Well, to me, the easiest one is like you're going to snap your fingers, but you just, you know, you've got to, I tell people, you've got to know, is the affirmative for you a release or is it, are you holding? You know, and once you know that, and I tell them, you know, practice geographically. If you're in Whole Foods, say I'm in Starbucks, you know, or I'm in McDonald's and you're someplace else, you know. In other words, just practice until you can get really quick answers, you know, just keep practicing because your mind will resist the muscle, muscle testing. So you need to be, you know, the quick answer is the key. If I work with somebody and they start responding in sentences, I tell them, I stop the session. I say, you're not ready. You're mentalizing your emotions. Right. You know, so let's, when you can do this, what one word responses, you know, then you're ready. Until then, you're not ready. I said, you know, you want to go, I had one guy, he started, basically he was answering me in paragraphs. <laughs> I said, I'm not your, I said, I'm not your guy. I said, there's a lot of people out there who will take your money to listen to your story, but I'm not one of them. You know, I said, I'm here for results. That's all I'm here for. You know, so. But, you know, the other part of that is you don't want people to pressure themselves to get results. You want the results to come from within. You know, you don't want their mind putting pressure and anxiety on them to get results. You know, that's another little devious trick of the mind. You know, so you just, you know, awareness is the antidote for everything. I mean, the greater your awareness, you know, the easier the process. But if you're stuck in a story, it makes it tougher. Because think about it, our eternal selves are all the same thing. There is no difference. So, of awareness. yeah. There's a guy I like named Tony Parsons. He's got a thing called the open secret. But he's the best I've heard, the clearest I've heard at describing all that is. Because in his language, everything is verbing. There's no subjects, no objects. It's just all verbing. There's talking, there's listening, there's thinking, there's eating, there's seeing, but there's nobody doing it. It's just happening. Tony Parsons. His, the the, his website's The Open Secret. Is there anybody here who is adept at muscle testing? There are many ways of doing it. Oh, it's great. Um, I love to do it, too. So, um, would you like to do a demonstration? If we have time, I'll do a demonstration with somebody if they'd like to. 820. We have time. Actually, the, he's better off over there. He's better there? Oh, okay. Yeah, just, he'll be fine. Uh, you're going to have to uh, translate for him. <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, you know, speak the answers. Yeah. Well, I, can somebody understand him better than I can? Because. Usually his girlfriend's here, and his girlfriend is the one who helps me out with the translation. But it's, um, it's almost better if he doesn't answer verbally. In other words, 
He just, I'll ask the questions, he'll have the response, you know. So you don't need to hear the response? I don't need to hear the response. He just okay. You know, he, he can just nod his head, you know. In other words, I want him to go inside more. Very good. I don't want him to be having to think about answering, okay? So you go into your block, go close your eyes, Go into your, where the blockage is. Okay, so mother or father, ancestral river? Both, okay. In utero or after birth? One through five or five through 10? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. Okay, winter, spring, summer, or fall? So March, April, or May? First week, second week, third week, or fourth week? Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday. Morning, noon, or night? Noon. Okay, so go into it. So what are you seeing or hearing or feeling or... So stay with it. Keep breathing. Let the breath take you deeper into it. Going a little deeper. What does the energy want to say? Okay, so stay with the why. Let it come out. That's it. Stay with it.
Good job. Does anybody have any questions? Well, for our viewers at home, <laughs> maybe you could explain what just happened since they didn't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for the home viewers, um, I asked a series of questions that took love into the into a blockage he had where he had an emotional release. And when you're present, fully present with the emotions, then your the blockage will start releasing. And generally blockages have several layers to them. And so you just have to keep on going back in and being present with the energy. Sometimes, lots of times, I'm only with a blockage for two or three minutes, four minutes at a time. Sometimes, like early in the morning if I'm in bed and I do it, it can go on for an hour and a half, two hours. Because the energy just goes from one part of my body to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Mm -hmm and just keeps releasing one after another. Boom, 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 boom. So, but, you know, you just stay with it as long as you can, and, you know, then it will dissipate for the moment or it will dissipate completely after a while. Sometimes I've had to go into a blockage 20, 30, 40 times to release a blockage, so. Thank you for your bravery and courage, love, to do that in front of all of us. That was awesome. Yeah, and uh, powerful, beautiful. I so appreciate the ability to clear blockages that quickly. <laughs> I, I'm also a practitioner and a healer, and my method does take a bit longer than that, <laughs> I must say. Um, there are many ways of doing it, of course, and whatever works is best. Yeah. For everyone. And I tell people to window shop to find out what works for you. Yeah. Because, you know, no one, there's no one universal method. So, you know. So I'm sure there's more questions, and I see one right here. Jaybird. Um, Brian, do you work one on one mostly, or do you think you're at some of the first level? Generally, I just do one on one, and I do it over the phone. So, because I want the person to be in a safe environment where they can either just go to sleep afterwards or, you know, you know, I, I do a number of sessions at night. So when the person's done, they can just, because, you know, you have a big emotional release and it wipes you out. So, so. Yes, that's a sign of a good healing when you need yeah. to go to sleep afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and here's the thing about, I, I think, you know, neuroplasticity is big in the brain. And I think after you have a, a major release, then the brain rewires itself. Yes. That's, I don't have any data on that, but that's just my feeling. that The brain just wires, rewires itself. Makes sense. So. Anybody else? Son, you must have another question. Sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, this is Barry. No, I like what you said about you know, taking an hour or two in the morning before getting out of bed. Because so much has been allowed to accumulate 
uh, that is in process and not being, by having dreams and not being fully present as awareness, as pure awareness. And it can take a, quite a while sometimes because it's not just me and my memories, it's like the whole humanity and the whole nature is being processed here. What do you feel about that? Um, I don't make it too complicated. Whatever is happening is happening, is how I... I don't try to interpret what's when it's releasing. If it's releasing, I don't really care. Because if, if I'm in trying to interpret it, then I'm in my mind. And the last place I want to be when I'm releasing is in my mind. So I just... Whatever is happening in that moment, that's where I'm at. Did I tell you about well, the point is, well, you were asking me about whether it was specific to me or the universe or a bigger picture. Like I see you sitting there. It's not like I'm interpreting that. It's happening. Yeah, so uh, that... I'm open and I'm not trying to... Be... I'm surrendered. I'm not making, trying to make anything happen. So whatever is revealed, the more it's felt as an undivided whole, the more it all releases and integrates. Yeah, I, I just, whatever's unfolding, that's where um, I just am with it. Yeah. So I have another question. So I was asking about the sonic slider, the, the vibrations help the electron flow. Yeah, well, it's not so much the slider helps the electron flow <laughs> as it is when you stimulate the meridians. The meridians are what right. allow so the that's electron. Like, like EFT tapping, that's also... Yeah, any, any, any stimulation that stimulates meridians allows blockages to is going to help. Release. Yeah, now, it'll help with it temporarily. The emotions, you have to release the emotions to have it be more permanent. Right, right. Yeah. Um, tapping, I know, uh, it seems that tapping helps to remind the mind that it has a body. <laughs> just tapping, you know, yeah, you're here, you're in a body, and it's just by reconnecting the mind with the body, the two integrate, and that's a release. Yeah, well, I'll, here's what I'll say about integration, okay? My mommy sent me a video about the heart from Dr. Uh, Cow Tom Thomas Cowens. And he talks about um, the electrical part of the body. And when it gets to the heart, it creates vortexes and transmutes the electrical to the physical. And these vortexes go to different organs in the body. So I would say your heart is the true integration point. Because I've read this from Drumbolo, and I know in Chinese medicine, the heart controls circulation and the nervous system. And so, and then, um, Someplace else I read about the heart and this this transmuting of the electrical into the physical. So, so I'm wondering about sound frequencies, like for example the gongs, <laughs> right. the bowls. Um, that's vibrational frequencies. That does that also help stimulate the meridians to clear blockages? Yeah, I would say, well, you know, people have all personal experiences with the yes. gongs. Yes. I mean, some people time travel with the gongs. Yes. <laughs> right? Some, I mean, everybody has all their unique own experiences with, with these vibrations, right? These right. frequencies. So I think it's, it's very much individualized how it, ha how it, you know, I enjoy it. So, you know, that's, <laughs> so, you know, to me, um, you know, I do some things for health purposes, and I do some things for enjoyment purposes, and I, <laughs> I do some things for social purposes. <laughs> you know, so that's, you know, that's kind of. Okay, 
Okay, so I have another question. Um, you mentioned that it takes a very short amount of time for um, cells to become cancerous when they don't have enough oxygen. 48 hours. 48 hours, wow, two days, amazing. So, um, electron flow, how, can you say a little bit more about the electron flow and how that helps the oxygen get into the cells? If you can, if you know, <laughs> you might not know it's okay. <laughs> well, you know, um, your lungs, you know, take in the oxygen, right? right? So each oxygen molecule has four electrons. Right. Each hemoglobin molecule can have up to four oxygen molecules. So oxygen is important from a powering communication point of view as well as the physical point of view, right? So, you know, in terms of breathing, you know, you, you'll have blockages along your spine for the diaphragm, okay? So, I don't know in terms of your specific question mm -hmm. about transference in terms of oxygen and electrons. Mm -hmm. You know, I just know a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I know for different diseases where the blockage points are in terms of for bronchial respiratory, that type of thing, you know. So that... So in other words, which meridians would be blocked that would result in that illness? Yeah. Or the manifestation or symptom? Right. Uh -huh. I don't get so f focused on cell behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm more focused on the result. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, I, because... I don't have the horsepower to know all that stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, to me, I always boil things down to the essence. You know, what is the key dynamic mm -hmm. that is the driver? That's what I want. You know, that's it doesn't matter whether I play sports. You know, which I did all through, you know, for a long time, and or, you know, whether in business. I always want to know what is the key dynamic that is the driver. What's going to make it work? <laughs> yeah, what, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So that's, the rest of it I don't really need to know. I mean, right. if I learn it, fine. But do I need to know it? Or do I need to remember it? I mean, I've learned, I've forgotten more stuff than I can ever, <laughs> yeah. ever imagine. So, because I can't tell you how many different modalities I've tried and how many different things that are, yeah. you know, I've been exposed to through the years. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just my weird thing that I want to know how and why. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so much a how and why guy. I'm just I'm just a resultant guy. <laughs> What's great. the driver and what gets me the results? That's that's basically my focus. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was talking on Zoom with a holistic healthcare provider today. Uh, uh, my friend asked me to be part of this, and um, he mentioned the how uh, detoxification is very important for health. As I totally know, that's how I healed my health. My body healed itself is through detoxing. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that I did that was to eat all raw food, no no cooked food, no and all organic and um, and it was quite marvelous. <laughs> but um, uh, he, this doctor mentioned that um, everybody talks about detoxing and using different things to detox the physical body, but they don't talk about the cellular level of detox. And that makes sense to me. Um, And he was saying that there's certain nutrients that we all need that many of us are deficient in for mm -hmm. that level of detox. And also, to my, in my mind, it was like, uh, fear is a toxic thought <laughs> that's blocking uh, the full expression of the electrons through the body. And, <laughs> and so anyway, um, so I'm putting toxins all together with including negative emotions or negative thoughts that cause those emotions that we can identify. Um, 
and that all together, yeah, detoxing and clearing the blockages is what allows the system to work. Mm -hmm. and, and that uh, video that I shared, the healing is voltage, saying that we need this much voltage to just maintain our health, and then, but we need like double that to heal or recover, right. or regenerate or renew, or right. you know, create a new cell, or, right? Right. Yeah. So. Um, I remember reading recently that oxygen has a voltage, has a current. Oh. Yeah, and I I have to store it as a thing. Okay, cool. For my quest. <laughs> okay, what time is it? Wendell, because you do want to. Uh, uh, about 10 till 9, or till 9. Okay, so uh, we have time for more questions. So, okay, so I'm a dancer, I'm a salsa dancer, so I get a lot of oxygen when I dance, so I'm activating my cells, right? Activating my whole body. So, is that cleansing my cellular? Whatever. <laughs> Negativity or whatever. That's my question, that is. <laughs> I remember. I don't know. Yes, I would say it's yes. And um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. We know that exercise is good for so many things in our bodies, and that, including circulation, and that helps everything to clear up. So, yes. Um, and John, let's mention about the electrons we can get from walking on the earth barefoot. Oh, yeah. So, you know. Basically, grounding in terms of, you know, I tell people, get a daily new supply of electrons because if you don't, the free radicals steal the electrons from your healthy cells, which creates inflammation, which continues the cycle of disease. So, as one doctor likes to say, the root of every disease is inflammation. So, yep. so grounding is big. Um, the other one is piezo, piezoelectric, piezo comes from pressure. So when you, you know, see the kids running around with the sneakers that light up, that's piezoelectricity. The way a microphone works is piezoelectricity. So walking, running, weightlifting, anything that creates pressure in your body. Is dancing. Gonna, dance, <laughs> dancing is going to create electron flow. And then obviously breathing is the, you know, I mean, the reason you relax during these breath exercises, deep breath exercises, is because your body's taking in more electrons. So. Nice. Very good. So those are the three main ways, you know. And I just do want to say that playing the gongs, or receiving the playing of the gongs, <laughs> definitely has helped me reduce inflammation and the pain from the inflammation and... So I don't know what it does, but it works. <laughs> well, it probably works like the tuning fork. In other words, yes. it harmonizes the cell. Yes. You know, in terms of um, bringing in it into alignment with its truer nature. Yes. Beautiful. I worry too if it's not a piezoelectric result because there is sound compression. Oh yeah. It's coming through you. Yeah. Yep. And sparing. Have you noticed uh, any uh, difference from different healers that you've known where uh, that the quality of rapport or sense of felt sense of interconnectedness between the healer and the healer you know, causes a kind of a, a resonance or a flow of electrons to be more enhanced or anything like that? Well, are you familiar with Barbara Brennan's work? Yeah. Yeah, so she does a lot of diagrams with, shows the chords between people. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that's that's how I see it more so, you know. Oh, you know, one thing I want to mention is, so if you, if any of you get this book, in the back of it, there's all the charts like this. So what I do is I made this one sheet up with all the different charts. Oh, nice. 
And then when I'm working with somebody, I put all the points. So if I'm tapping on the doll, I don't have to be flipping around the book trying to, you nice. know. So it's just, so I would, you know, recommend you doing this because it makes it a lot easier. Yes. I don't know why they don't have that as a page in the book, but they don't, so. <laughs> Now, the other thing, too, just in terms of Tom Wren, so Tom Tam is, he's like the Thomas Edison of uh, bioelectricity. He's kind of a trial and error genius type of guy. I mean, and he likes, uh, his mind never stops. Him and Eileen McCusick, she's another one, her mind never stops either. They're always looking at the next frontier in terms of healing, you know? And um, so the thing about Tom is he comes up with some new technology about every 120 days. <laughs> he just, so in the beginning when he was, this is like 2013, he started to come up with machines. And um, so I would start buying every, every one he came up with to, <laughs> to try it out. And um, so what happened to me in terms of, um, I had some very aggressive skin growths in my left bicep within 48 hours. I had six hard tissue growths that doubled the size of my arm. My bones started to ache and so uh, I had a growth up here, and it was a, like uh, one of those uh, come to Jesus moments, <laughs> because you know you're you're thinking your mortality. Because so I said to myself, okay, you've been doing this Tom Ren thing for how many years? You know, you're going to walk the walk, or you're going to you know. <laughs> So I gave myself 48 hours to try and neutralize these growths. And I said, if I can't do it in 48 hours, because I knew if I went to the hospital, they were going to want to cut out a big portion of my arm. And that was not an attractive option to me because I've been a jock my whole life. So <laughs> I didn't want to go that route. So, so I had these machines and I put them on it. His new machines, you don't have to do this, but the old ones, I put them on all the meridian points for skin cancer. And I did the emotional work with the beliefs. And so what happened was, in the 48 hours, this growth, which was about the size of a quarter, went down to about the size of a nickel. And that was just like a flat black growth here. And then these growths stopped growing, stopped bleeding, and then um, about two weeks later, I was down to th three on the surface. And then within a month, the skin was clear, but I still had volume in there. And then after a couple more weeks, the volume was gone. So wow. then I was back to normal. Wow. But that was my own personal experience with Tong Ren. <laughs> and... So, well, here's a funny story. I'll tell you the first time. So I used to be in investment real estate and I used to fly around the country doing real estate deals for a big institution. So it's kind of like playing professional monopoly. <laughs> so I was doing a deal with them. Um, we had IBM as a tenant. We were ne renegotiating the lease and it was taking a long time. But so I walked into the attorney's office who I was working with and she was in total tears. And I said, what's up? And she said, my dog's dying. I said, oh, I said, what's it dying for? It's got cancer, it's got a tumor. So I said, you know, I, I just started taking this crazy uh, Chinese medicine course. I said, uh, you want me to try healing on it? She said, would you? I said, yeah. I said, you have a picture of the dog? So she gives me a picture. So then we did our hour meeting and on the lease, and then 
I go down to my office, I don't have a doll, so I take out a water bottle and I'm feeling the water <laughs> bottle. And I can feel the blockage and I start doing my little voodoo thing. <laughs> and then, so, and then before I go home, I do it again, you know, and I'm pulling the energy out of the, and then I went home that night, I got out my doll and hammer and I'm whacking away, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so the next morning I go in and there's this long escalator. She's at the top, I'm at the bottom. And she screams down at the top of her lungs, what did you do? And I go, and I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, I killed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and she's coming down going, what did you do? What did you do? And I go, I don't know, what did I do? <laughs> She goes, oh my God, you can't believe it. the tumor went away overnight. Wow. <laughs> and that's when I got some confidence with my doll and hammer. That experience was like, holy shit, you know? I, I, you know, so that was, that was my initial Tongren healing experience. So I tell people, start with the animals. Because the, the animals and the kids, the young kids and the animals don't have beliefs. You know what I mean? It, so these, they heal much quicker. That's right. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's a great one. Oh. I got one more question. What does it feel like when you're pulling the energy out? Is it like, what, it, what is that sensation? It's just, you can feel, I don't, it just, they're like strings. You, it's okay. like you're pulling you string. Feel a lump, like underneath the tissue or something like no, that? No, like... I just, I can feel the density. Okay. You feel the density. Okay. Not so much a lump, you just feel the density. It's so like a resistance or a... Well, it's, how can I describe it? It's just, I can feel it now. I mean, it's just more dense, you know, and then you can just, and once I feel it, then I do a counter clock rotation thing like this, and then I just start pulling. And your state is more just like calm neutrality, you just like maintain a neutral state? Yeah, I, I, I'm very much, I don't take on other people's energy, so I just... You know, they, I, I slap my hands every so often, you know. When I feel the, you know, I've got too much and I just... Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, well, I, the doll is very handy. I like the doll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've been together for a long time. Why do you beat on it so hard? Okay, why do you beat it you can tell the poor head of the dog. <laughs> but, Is that the main healing point? <laughs> well, it, I always start at the top of the head. You know, I just start. Because that's GV22 and it's, you know, critical. You got a bunch of points up here that are, you know, stem cells and, you know, just a bunch of stuff. So I just start there and kind of work, work along. Yeah. Just really fast. How do you clean yourself after? Do you like do any sort of like energy clearing? No, I just. That's it. Wow, amazing. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, nice. you know, I for some reason I've just never taken on other people's energy, so I just do it. And, you know. So one thing is, is you might want to write this down. There's a, you can uh, Google. There's a woman named Sarah Nienbeck, N-I-E-B-A-N-K. And she has a series of video called What's the Point? And their Tongren, the thing about Tongren is they don't have a, a manual, instruction manual. You know, it's just, it's kind of, you just, you know, it's a family business and they've never really, they don't have all the fancy marketing stuff or anything like that. They just... So, but this woman who's a practitioner, she did this a video series called What's the Point? And she talks about the points in terms of the diseases and stuff. So that's a good educational thing if you're interested in Tong Ren. So. And Tom Tam is the most humble, uh, honest guy you'll ever meet. I mean, he just, for what he has accomplished, because this guy's responsible for probably 20,000 people being alive that would normally have perished. So, I mean, he just, 
You know, he's a very humble guy. I have a really quick comp. I was born in Corsica, and my aunt and uncle lived in Dakar in Africa for five years. And the Africans would, to get rejuvenated, they would work with their, their feet in the sand. Yeah. The sand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. with the magnetic resonance, and it would really rejuvenate. Yeah. We could do that so easily. I mean, to me. Live- <laughs> To me, Hawaii's state health plan should be grounding and earthing. I mean, the fact that it's not not even mentioned is, you know, I walk around in bare feet a lot, and I carry my running shoes when I work out. I, you know, I run first, and then when I get done running, I take off my running shoes and I'm walking around barefoot. Nobody ever asked me why you're walking around barefoot. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, so. I just want to make a comment. Sand is actually a lot of silica inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's piezoelectric and pyroelectric or crystalline. It's crystalline, yeah. It's crystalline, silica. So you're silica. talking about piezoelectric right, right, right. Pyro- and pyroelectric. Your pressure and heat is your target. Oh, right, right. So when you put your feet in there, is that is that a con- isosceptor, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this portion up.